A hulking metal frame holds together a machine built to make power. The structure didn't hide those four huge turbines that turned steam into electricity. The energy company Dynagy is overseeing the demolition. The firm's Katie Sullivan points at boiler tubes that are now part of a tangled metal mess on the ground. But there are hundreds of tubes like this that run through the boiler that carry hot water and steam, and that's all part of the power generation process. And these tubes will come out um, once the structure is felled and will be salvaged. For months, crews have ripped out the bottom floors of the plant. Sullivan says the structure has been gradually gutted. Concrete and metal piles are sifted and separated and then carted away. This is a large job. We've removed 7,000 tons of steel so far from the site. Um, by the time this project is done, we could have upwards of 24,000 tons of steel that are recycled and salvaged. Um, considerable amount of concrete and other materials have been salvaged and repurposed. Um, very little waste actually from a demolition of this size. Workers on the ground and in excavators and skid steers do the heavy lifting. The major support beams are being readied for the explosive charges that will go off in a series of blasts that could go on for up to two minutes on demolition day. It'll sound a little bit like rolling thunder. And these first three facilities will fall to the north. This last facility on the end here will fall to the east, all of them falling away from the water and other natural habitat. That'll happen in a matter of weeks, but demolition day can't come soon enough for Laura Hunter. The Environmental Health Coalition activist struggled for years to shut down what she considers an ecological disaster. It comes from a day when we didn't know any better and we thought we had to put power plants on, on the coast using the ocean to cool them. Uh, we're not at that day anymore and so really it was just a matter of time. The facility spewed air pollution into nearby neighborhoods and created ecological havoc by using the shallow bay water to cool the giant turbines. The chlorinated and superheated water was pumped back into the bay. Basically, the entire South Bay is a fish nursery. So juvenile fish, if we want to have big fish, we got to have baby fish. They grow up here. I mean, the shallow waters are really very important. And that's why this plant was located in the most damaging location it could possibly have been, right in the middle of a fish nursery area, shallow water densely populated. In the shadow of the facility, delicate marshland nurtures all manner of fish, birds, and bugs. The plants are very productive. The um, space that it provides is very productive. You look around, you see the birds um, using it. And, you know, we haven't done a very good job featuring areas like this because, you know, when you look here, you don't see the, the beautiful salt marsh. You see, you know, the eyesore. The Port of San Diego's Tanya Castaneda says the power plant's 115-acre footprint will change dramatically. We're really looking forward to the removal of the power plant. That's going to open up that space, and it's just part of this grand vision for the 500-plus acres of the Chula Vista Bayfront to make it a more welcoming, accessible place. And in its place, the uh, Port of San Diego and the city of Chula Vista are hoping to develop parkland, areas that are much more user-friendly than they have been. When we remove it, that's going to immediately affect the, this whole land area. It's going to make it more desirable. It's going to help us bring in the developers and the financiers to build the world-class bayfront that we deserve. Castaneda says that potential development along Chula Vista's bayfront could replace the revenue that the port earned from the South Bay Power Plant when it was churning out electricity. She says bayfront development here has been held back because not many developers want to build a world-class hotel with a view of a hulking gas-fired power plant. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.